Hello everybody and thanks for watching my talk. My name is Tobias Drey, I'm from Ulm University and working in the Human-Computer Interaction Group of Professor Enrico Ruzio. I want to present you towards collaborative learning in virtual reality, a comparison of co-located symmetric and asymmetric pair learning and show you in this talk our study results in favor of symmetric pair learning as well as our six guidelines. Learning is an essential part of everybody's life. Combining pair learning with virtual reality could be a promising approach as both are known to increase learning success individually. Previous works have shown that pair learning results in a higher learning outcome and it enhances motivation, social presence and individual self-esteem. Virtual reality can also improve learning outcome, active engagement, motivation and interest of students. Due to these benefits, we assume that it is possible to create environments beneficial for learning by combining VR with pair learning. However, as very little is known about such a combination, we want to answer how VR pair learning environments should be designed. One approach is a symmetric setup, where all users use the same type of device, for example, two VR HMTs, as shown in this example. This benefits equal interaction and increases presence, immersion and communication. The other approach is an asymmetric setup, where the users have different devices. For example, one user is in VR and the other uses a tablet. This setup can perfectly adapt to a teacher and student setup, where the tablet teacher guides the VR student. Furthermore, it is an easier setup, as less tracking space with safety precautions is needed and tablets are commonly available hardware. But VR learning does not only have benefits. VR environments can also be distracting, as well as the peer user, because the user's cognitive capacity is strained by unnecessary stimuli, for example, unimportant body movements of the peer or an animated background not relevant for learning. Therefore, learners need to know where to focus and distinguish relevant from irrelevant content for proper learning. We use the classic multimedia design principle signaling to guide learners' attention. As no work directly compares symmetric and asymmetric systems for VR pair learning, including the influence of signaling on these, we defined two research questions. The first is about the influence of symmetric and asymmetric collaboration on learning. We measured as dependent variables beside learning outcome itself, also presence, immersion, play experience, motivation and cognitive load, which are factors supportive for learning. The second is about the influence of signaling on the same measures. To answer our research questions, we developed two different pair learning prototypes and compared them against each other. In a symmetric prototype, the student and teacher used VR HMDs and explored a virtual forest together. We further chose this topic as nature awareness is very important due to growing environmental pollution and climate change, but it is relatively low in the general population. Therefore, it was a topic in which most potential participants would have low prior knowledge, making it possible to measure our learning unit's learning outcome. Due to the lack of forest animal experts in a general population, which could have mined the teacher, we've created teaching sheets only visible to the teacher for our learning unit, which contained all animal information as explanatory text. We also implemented a signaling and non-signaling condition. In the asymmetric prototype, only the student explored the forest with a VR HMT, while the teacher guided using a spectator view on a tablet seeing the virtual environment through the student's eyes. This allowed the teacher to follow the student accurately and mimic state-of-the-art HMT spectator views. This was the base for our 2 times 2 study design that further considers the two roles student and teacher. We had a symmetric and an asymmetric condition, both with and without signaling, and conducted a between-subject study with 46 participants. Our research showed that presence, measured by the presence questionnaire by Whitman Singer, immersion, measured by the immersive experience questionnaire, and player experience, measured by the player experience inventory questionnaire, were statistically significantly higher, and cognitive load was statistically significantly lower in the symmetric condition, with moderate and high effect sizes. The symmetric and asymmetric conditions performed great and equally well regarding learning outcomes, showing that both are valuable learning systems. According to the qualitative feedback, which was based on interviews and the thematic analysis, communication was easier for participants in the symmetric system, 
showing the importance of the other person's presence inside a virtual environment. Signaling showed a statistically significantly higher presence, play experience and better cognitive load for students, supporting learning and indicating that the classic multimedia design principle signaling can be used for VR pair learning. Despite this, the learning outcome was not significantly improved. Based on these findings, we defined six guidelines for designing co-located VR pair learning applications to support researchers, educators and software developers in their work. I want to highlight the first two guidelines in this talk. Our first guideline states that symmetric systems should be preferred over asymmetric systems. This is based on our findings that this setup improves presence, immersion and player experience for all participants and cognitive load for the teachers. Participants further stated higher motivation and fun and the symmetric setup provided easier communication and better out-of-the-box workspace awareness. These are all factors supporting learning. Our findings also show that in the asymmetric system, the teacher's detachable spectator view made communication difficult for both participants and it was not obvious what their peer was viewing at the moment. This resulted in a loss of workspace awareness. Therefore, we advise that in symmetric and asymmetric learning systems, all users should be allowed to freely move around in the virtual environment and to provide a visualization of all users' field of view, different than in current spectator views. Summing up, we've created, first, a comparison of symmetric and asymmetric, as well as signaling and non-signaling VR pair learning environments in a user study with six dependent variables and eight control variables, and a qualitative thematic analysis based on semi-structured interviews. Second, design insights for a complex symmetric and asymmetric VR pair learning application that optionally enables signaling to highlight essential information. Third, the definition of six novel guidelines on how to design symmetric as well as asymmetric co-located VR pair learning applications based on our qualitative and quantitative results. Thank you very much for watching my talk. Please read our paper for further details.